Now there's a practical you can carry out where you're looking at the terminal velocity of an object falling through a viscous fluid. Uh, so here what we're doing, we're timing it, we can measure the distance travelled so we can work out its velocity at different times and eventually we can work out its terminal velocity when the forces on it are balanced. But we can take this a step further and we can actually use some data that we've recorded to find out the viscosity of the liquid, which effectively is how sticky it is, how well it flows. So that's what this video is all about, how to find out the viscosity of this liquid. So this is the equation that you can use to work out the viscosity of a liquid. Uh, the liquid we've got in this case is just some muscle soak body bath because it's just nice and blue and it smells nice, much nicer than things like glycerol or uh, wallpaper paste or whatever. Now, um, basically, with the experiment that you do where you drop a ball bearing and you work out its terminal velocity, you can work out how sticky the liquid is. So this thing here is the viscosity, uh, and this is the symbol which is eta, the Greek letter eta, rather than mu, which is like the opposite version. Uh, so this uh, stands for the viscosity. So what else do we need to know? Well, we need to know the mass of the ball bearing, uh, and we can measure that using a mass balance. So this is something that we can easily find out and record. We then need to know uh, the gravitational field strength, uh, so we can work out the weight and therefore the forces involved. And we know that G is just 9.81, again that's given to us in our data booklet. Uh, these are constants, but we do need to know the radius of this ball bearing. Now to do that, we don't measure the radius directly, but what we do is we measure the diameter. And to do that, we can use some vernier calipers or a micrometer screw gauge, something like that. Again, what you need to do is, um, before you measure the diameter, check there's no zero error by just uh, bringing the jaws together, having a look here to see if that lines up with zero, zero. And then what it's important to do, and this is just best practice, if you're going to measure the diameter of uh, something, do it three times. Okay, you should hopefully get the same value three times, but this just means that if it's not completely spherical in shape, you can actually kind of just identify that. So you've measured the diameter three times, you divide by two to get to your radius. We already know G, 9.81. But this thing here, rho, this stands for the density of the liquid. Now, to work out the density, it's going to be equal to the mass divided by the volume. And this is something that you can work out before you start the experiment or even afterwards. All you need to do is, you know, uh, get an, uh, a measuring cylinder, which is empty, perhaps, you know, a 100 milliliter one. Uh, you record the mass of the empty cylinder. You pour in your liquid up to the, the right value. And again, you want to make sure that the, the bottom of the meniscus is at the, the right reading. So you've then got your volume measured really accurately. And then um, you just uh, you know divide one by the other to get your density, so you can find that out. Um, again, you've got your R down here from the radius of that ball bearing, and you've got V. How do you work out the terminal velocity? Well, what you should do is you should find that when you do some data and you plot it on a VT graph, you should have something that looks a bit like this. Okay, obviously this is when it's accelerating, and this point here when it's a horizontal line is its terminal velocity. So all you need to do is interpolate back to the line here, and then you can read off your terminal velocity. You put the numbers in and out comes your answer, which tells you effectively how sticky that liquid is. Things like heavy motor oil, they have a high viscosity. Things like water have a low viscosity. But this is just a nice extension uh, to that task when you're starting to look at how objects fall uh, and thinking about the, the forces acting on objects which are moving at their terminal velocity.